Hi. In this lesson, I want us to look at some of the different types of igneous bodies that we can find uh, in the geological record, in the rocks. Sometimes, as in this case, we see uh, these igneous features creating spectacular landscapes. This particular, uh, this particular landform is a place called a ship rock. That's with a P, not any other letters, because it's really good. Uh, in New Mexico, uh, in the western or southwestern USA. It's an amazing feature. You can see it for, for miles away. What you're looking at there is igneous rock. This igneous rock, you can see, is significantly harder than the soft sediments that we find around it. It creates this spectacular landform. But we need to think, what's actually caused that? What feature are we actually looking at there? We can also see that coming off from that central feature, we've got a whole series of radial, and they look like walls in the landscape. What could they be? What They're again made of igneous rock. What do you think... Um, these things actually are uh, formed by. These features are, are a result of the bodies we've been looking at. Think about um, what it might be uh, made from. What bodies are we actually seeing here? Okay. On a slightly smaller scale, here we can see uh, an igneous intrusion. So we have intrusive igneous rock that's clearly been injected into uh, some sedimentary rock. So the igneous rock is the dark color uh, rock that we can see, and the light gray colored rock uh, is sedimentary. We can also, when we're looking at these intrusive igneous rocks, Think about the relationship with that surrounding country rock. So, the country rock here, this light grey sediment, uh, shows bedding. We can see the layers within it. The igneous rock, the dark coloured stuff, has been injected into cracks within this um, sedimentary rock. We can even see where some of these cracks are. Uh, that are parallel uh, to the um, igneous feature we can see. Now, I know when we look at this that we have uh, part of this that is a dike, and we also have part of this that's a sill. And we need to think about why this is. Clearly, these structures are both fairly thin, they're sort of sheet-like, and they make a slab of rock that goes uh, disappears into the cliff there. But the key feature, the key difference between them is this relationship with the country rock, with the bedding in the country rock. The sill, we can see, follows that country rock. Now, the word we use to describe this in geology is that it's concordant. Concord means an agreement. So it follows the, um, the layers within that country rock. That's what makes that a sill. The dike, on the other hand, we can see is at right angles to that bedding. It cuts across it. So we describe that as being discordant. Discord means disagreement. Okay. What I'd like you to do, I would like you to have a go. Okay. Let's see if we can apply that. I'd like to work through the questions on page eight. Identify the type of igneous uh, body that's there. You may have already done that. And I'd like you to give reasons why. Using these terms uh, where appropriate for these structures. Have a go at that now. See what you can come up with.
Okay, let's have a look at some answers here. So this is photograph one. We've got the darker coloured igneous rock uh, in the middle there, and you can see the layers of uh, sediment in the uh, country rock, uh, particularly behind it. So this feature is a dike. And the reason it's a dike, we can see it's a, a sheet-like body, it's intrusive, it's in cutting through the country rock, and it's discordant. Number two, uh, the igneous rock here uh, we can see has got these uh, vertical structures in, more about those uh, in a later lesson. Uh, and we can see the sedimentary rock uh, near the bottom of this cliff uh, creating those layers. This is a sill. And it's a sill because, again, it's intrusive, but this one is concordant. The bottom of this igneous rock, the darker colour igneous rock there, is parallel to the bedding, so it's concordant. Here we have um, uh, another dark igneous rock. Some interesting things going on here, but the majority of this, uh, this dark igneous rock is a sill. And the reason it's a sill, just like the previous uh, example, it's intrusive, so it's injected into these uh, cracks in the, uh, in the country rock, but it follows the layers. It's concordant. Picture number four is a bit different. This time we're looking at a satellite image. Again, we can see the darker colored igneous rock spread out over the ground surface. We can even see uh, some of the, uh, the streams in here and the rivers uh, in this area uh, where this igneous rock is found. Because it's at the surface, and we can see around the, uh, the right-hand edge there, so the, the rubbly uh, end of this, this is a lava flow. And the reason it's a lava flow is that it's extrusive. It's an extrusive igneous rock. It's found, uh, or it forms, after it's been erupted from a volcano. So it's been extruded from a volcano onto the Earth's surface, therefore it's a lava flow. Picture five, a very famous mountain. This is in uh, Yosemite National Park uh, in America. Um, it's quite hard to see here because we're not really seeing much country rock. Country rock here has been uh, eroded. But what you're looking at is uh, almost entire, well, it is granite. So this is actually a pluton. It's very difficult to get a, a nice picture of a complete pluton, but this is a pluton. And the pluton is intrusive, um, it's very large scale, uh, it is discordant, unfortunately on this picture we can't see the country rock, but the scale of it shows us it must be a pluton. Number six is the ship rock. Now the ship rock has this uh, central large area, that um, area is uh, about 500 meters high, and then surrounded by these uh, sort of radial wall structures. What we're actually looking at here uh, is a dike and a volcanic neck. So these radial walls coming out from that central mountain are the dikes. The country rock here has been eroded away, and what we see there is a volcanic neck. The rest of the volcanic cone again has been eroded away. They're, they're not particularly robust things. Uh, volcanic cones. They're just piles of rubble, really. The volcanic neck is uh, is intrusive, okay? Uh, and these dikes are, uh, will be discordant with the uh, surrounding area. We're not really seeing the lava flow here um, because the surface that it would have erupted on has gone. It's been eroded.
Photograph number seven. We're looking at uh, a surface here of some granite with these black uh, blobs in it. These black blobs are xenoliths. So these are lumps of country rock that have fallen into the, the granitic magma. And we now find them as these different, these foreign rocks in this much lighter colored granite. Number eight, again, we've got some dark colored um, igneous rock uh, in a lighter colored country rock. This is a dike. You can just about see some of the layering in that light colored country rock, although it's uh, perhaps, you could even argue it was a sill. It is a tricky one to see this. We do need to see uh, more parts of the country rock. And finally, number nine, nice easy one to finish, uh, a snow-capped volcanic cone. Where we do find volcanic cones like this, they tend to be relatively recent things. Uh, we don't find ancient volcanoes that are still cone-shaped. That you can see what's happening at the side of this volcano. It's being eroded away. Uh, they're, they're really not very robust things. They don't last uh, for tens of millions of years. You know, they'll get eroded away relatively quickly. This, of course, is extrusive igneous rock. Okay. It's really important that we recognize all these things. Uh, there's another question I'd like to have a go on page nine. Um, can we answer all those questions on page nine? Okay, as the sun sets over uh, the ship rock, we can see that um, looking for the shape of these igneous bodies and crucially their relationship uh, with the surrounding rocks is important for to be able to identify these things. It very commonly comes up uh, in exams, um, and the more practice we get at it, uh, at identifying these features, the better. Next lesson, of course, uh, we'll go through more of these identifications. But that's for another time. I'll see you then.